Welcome to Creepy Creatures Crime, Volume 2. Remember, websites, links will be provided if you want to order the PDF or the documents. Please also remember, I am a researcher. I write and read these stories pure out of interest. I'm no professional in this specific field. I'm a genealogist with a special interest in crime cases. These forensic research and investigations is used in my research. I then share these stories with you. With each story, I do a narrative. The narrative is in my own words, my opinion, but fully backed by facts. Contents are not for children or the faint-hearted. Some stories have graphic contents and images. Please be warned. Kali Carl Johannes Delport. He was born in 1956. He was the son of a farmer, Martinez Delport, and a farmer himself. He stayed on the farm called Aller Park in Ladysmith. Kali was normally hired by the neighbors or people in the surrounding areas because he was considered one of the best marksmen in the area. He had 13 licensed guns in his rifle cabinet. Kali's classification was a rampage mass murderer. This is the act of murdering a number of people, typically simultaneously or over a relatively short time period and in close geographical proximity. His dad was Martinez. He was born in 1924. His mother is not spoken of, but I found a marriage of Martinez where he married a lady, Elizabeth Watson. She might have been the mother, but I can't say this for sure. He married then Eleanor Elizabeth in 1982. Eleanor only died in 2008 on the farm Ollert Park, as described by Gen Database. Some other families are also mentioned there, close family to him, I presume, but I won't mention them here because I think they are still alive. Kali had an IQ of 78. That and insanity saved him from the gallows. Let us enter the Kali Abyss. In 1992, the newspapers dubbed him the Lady Smith Butcher, a name I do not agree with. This story made me rather think of uh, um, Franz a train story in a way rather than the Butcher of Lady Smith. Kali was diagnosed post arrest with borderline personality disorder. Remember, this mood changing disorder is also known as emotionally unstable personality disorder. It gives the barrier of its name a pattern personality and severe perception problems. It also is stigmatized, like many other disorders of its kind, because people just don't understand it, I presume. It is actually a an, an very severe illness. Paranoid schizophrenia can be very dangerous, untreated. The carrier of this behavior disorder is mostly reckless and psychotic. Kali is still alive, what I've heard, keeping a low profile. Maybe his name is changed, maybe not. But I think he's still called Kali. Here is Kali's story as I think it happened. Happy New Year, Happy New Year. It is 1981. Me and Dad, here on the farm, I'm so happy. Don't get me wrong. Dad can be very strict. Gee, he can make me sidestep him every other day. He eats me often with a shambok and he doesn't even care who is watching. But at least he let me do what I love, the farming with the animal. These animals are my everything. I have 400 sheep and some cattle. And my dad only pays me 300 rand to help out here and there. But I'm happy. I do sell some cattle and sheep for money sometimes, but then I just buy a new gun, another animal, or that blue suit I like so much. Life couldn't get better, but it definitely can get worse. In March 1982, Dad married. He's now married to Eleanor. I like her. I hear them calling her Nina. I will call her Nally, but I don't think she likes me much. I think she hates me because I am a simple-minded bloke. I must make my own food outside with times and never ever am I allowed eating with my dad no more. She wants me gone, I'm sure. I'm not happy no more. 
And then sometimes I think she just hates me because of those cattle thieves I killed. I had to the Bluxoms. They took my animals. They're supposed to pay. That's my stuff. First the guy that took my sheep, and then the other one took my cattle, and I found him slaughtering it as if it was his. I did not shoot them because of color or any other reasons. It because they were thieves. They stole my stuff. Philip knows. He might tell you, but I do not like Philip. He tells lies about me too. He said something like, I have two persons in my head, and the other times he shouted, That's almost like the army letter I got the other day, the rejection one in P.O. Box 367. Derek is the best one to ask. He's my friend, my very, very best friend. I'm never violent. Derek and his girlfriend, Lisa, likes me. And of all people knows I'm always smiling, I'm always friendly, and I've got a soft heart. I always knew when not to speak, and I am normally very quiet. Mostly I just listen to the others what they say. Sunday we visited Antoinette, Lisa, Derek, and me. I'm already chappy, but the picnic was glorious. I rolled after we ate. I do not want to stay long. I hate leaving my dad alone. That was the last Sunday we all visited. The next time I see them was in court. That Sunday night, I decided not to eat. It's anyway not pleasant sitting on the porch alone, always eating with the dogs. I fell down, even depressed, whatever that includes. This after my dad shared the news that Eunice's little girl is not Shlingwayu. She also is... She's a Dalport now. She's my half-sister, he said. I was thinking, he's teasing me again like he always does. But I'm worried she will take my place now. People must think he's cruel. He always say, I'm stupid, I'm dumb, I need to be in a mental house. And, and my mind is like having nothing inside. And I'm a fat giant. But I understand my dad and I love him. Monday morning, the 20th of January, 1992. I knew people are coming to buy some cattle. So I walk up to Dad and I say to him, try to tell him that the money is mine and the price must be right. He can't go too cheap. But he's not listening. It's like he's not listening to me. And then I suddenly felt funny. And I, I tried again and I felt more funny. It was like this voice in my head. I decided there and then to run to my gun cabinet and took out my magnum. Today I will scare my dad, but that money is mine, not Nala's. I pointed the gun at him and I started shouting, but suddenly he was lying on the veranda. Why? Why are you lying down, Dad? Are you playing dead? Are you teasing me again? And then I saw all the blood. I was, it was in the middle of his chest. Something must have happened. I decided to call for help and I ran to the kitchen and I, I wanted to ask Alzina in the kitchen. But then suddenly she was playing dead as well. But now I was hearing this noise, not seeing anything by that time. I was blinded except for black dots. It was black dots everywhere. I had to get more ammo. It's like these dots wanted me and want to take me to hell for what I did to dad. I suddenly had an urge to burn everything down. I set fire to the farmhouse. I set fire to the car, but still I couldn't get out of this blindness. The numbness took over and I took the yellow pickup and I wanted to go and burn Nala's car, but I couldn't find it. So again, all these dots were following me and uh, they had weapons and I'm trying to, to get out here and they are trying to catch me and they want to take me to hell. Why is nobody helping me? I had to defend myself. When I woke up, I was handcuffed. Today is my day in court. I see Willem, my brother there. Hello. Nala and some other family. The people are angry with me and I don't understand. Lisa is crying. And Derek looks concerned. They say I stood there pathetic, hopeless, in that guilty box. 
at least the pastor prayed for me because they all are so angry with me. I hate myself. I know dad is dead. My clothes are wrinkled. It's not iron. Alcina is dead. I answered the questions. I tried to, but I don't know all the answers. At least the doctors seem to understand me. I cannot even pick up my shoulders. They are hanging. I cried every time they spoke to me and I sobbed every time I heard my dad's name. I felt funny again. Not that losing control funny, but I just felt funny. And then I blacked out and fainted in that guilty box. Some family tells lies. Some don't even look at me. Some people say they should have given me less guns long time ago. I wonder what will they do with my guns and my animals now. Nellie, please look after them, I think, as I looked at her. Maybe give some to Betty. She's most now my sister. Sorry. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Mochasa. Askis Ozina. Ozina is dead. I'm crying, sobbing by now. I can't speak no more. At the end, Kali was found guilty. He slipped the gallows due to his insanity, his sap abnormal intelligence and emotional imbalance. He never was violent. I just believe that the court should have helped him the previous times with the previous murders, which they didn't, and the previous killings. His IQ and his intelligence was sub abnormal. This is what the court said, and for him to escape his circumstances was not in his mental capacity. And this led to an outburst of astronomical consequences. These consequences Kali's mind could not comprehend. Carl Johannes Dalport was found guilty of nine counts of murder and 20 counts of attempted murder. They found 3,600 rounds of ammunition on him. Kali was sentenced to 39 years in prison. All the people he killed that day was shot dead center in the chest. A link will be posted here. On the link you'll find the website. On the website there's a PDF that you can buy. The PDF is the correct fact-based story and then there is the link also on the website for documents. Documents includes the newspaper clippings of that day, of the happenings then, the certificates that I found and other documents that is included like in each story. Thank you for listening and please join in again.